What's up guys, Garrett here, and today I wanted to talk to you about tips and tricks for building with ICF construction. Now I spent two years building my own ICF house, and honestly I wish there was a video like this that was out there whenever I was building, because it would have made my job a heck of a lot easier. So we'll just get right into it. Here are the 14 tips that I could come up with to make your ICF build a heck of a lot easier. Number one, place the blocks in the approximate place that they're gonna be used on the job site. Now, if you have a bunch of 90 degree corners, make sure you put them near where they're gonna be built. Uh, if you have 45s, kind of the same thing. If you have to move your blocks any sort of distance, I recommend using some sort of tractor or like a telehandler, something with forks, because the bundles, they weigh about 80 pounds a piece and they are awkward. If you drag them too much, you're gonna break the straps that actually hold them together. Number two, use a hot knife or a sawzaw to cut your blocks. I'd recommend against using like a, a drywall knife. It'll work, but it'll wear you out and it takes too long. A battery powered sawzaw is what I use to cut my blocks. Worked great, but keep in mind you will probably be inhaling some ICF particles as you do cut. A hot knife is probably the best thing that you could use, although it does create fumes, but you won't have those little ICF particles. And with a hot knife, you have to have a constant source of power. So if you're running off of generator power, this may not be the best tool for the job. Number three, the second row is actually the hardest row of blocks to place. Once you have that first row down, you don't quite have them tight enough together. So that second row is actually what tightens everything up. Don't get overly frustrated. It will take some time to get everything tight. But once you make it past that second row, each row becomes a lot easier. Number four, have your rebar pre-bent by your supplier or by a power bender. I would recommend against manually bending. It takes too long and it takes too much effort. You're gonna wear yourself out. I chose to buy a power bender and do the bending myself. Now I bought one off of eBay for about 500 bucks. Sounds like a lot, but to me it was money well spent. Having your rebar pre-bent by your supplier does cost money, so remember that. Number five, use the palm of your hand to drive all of your blocks together. Do not use a hammer, don't use a mallet, don't use a piece of wood. They will all damage the nubs that hold the blocks together. So the palm of your hand is actually your best bet for not damaging those nubs. However, your hand will be sore at the end of the day. It's just a fact of life when you're building with ICF. Number six, wear sunglasses and sunscreen whenever you're working with ICF blocks. They are bright white, highly reflective, and just flat out blinding whenever you're working with them. So you may have your back to the sun, but due to that highly reflective nature, you're gonna get a sunburn on the front side of you. Trust me, sunglasses, sunblock, save your skin, save your eyes, you'll thank me. Number seven, measure your openings for your doors, your windows, and your penetrations over and over and over again before you ever put concrete in. Remember, when the concrete is in, it sets up quick, and you cannot move much of anything afterwards. Also remember that the concrete is very heavy, so your door and your window box will actually shrink just a little bit whenever you place the concrete within them. So my recommendation would make them about a quarter inch rough opening bigger than what the manufacturer says. Most likely they're going to compress to the size that you want. Also, the tops and bottoms of your window bucks may develop a slight bow underneath all of that concrete weight. Now that extra quarter inch dimension that you put in your rough opening may help combat that just in case you do get a little bit of a bow. Number eight, spend extra time bracing your window and door bucks. It doesn't take much for them to get out of square once you put concrete in them. That's an immense amount of weight pushing from all sides. So make sure you have all of your horizontal bracing, all of your vertical bracing, as well as some diagonal bracing to keep everything very, very square. Number nine, use actual ICF bracing at no more than six foot spacing whenever you're building your home. Real ICF bracing is expensive, especially if you're gonna buy it and all you're gonna do is build just one home. But if you're a contractor, definitely buy the actual ICF bracing. If you're a homeowner, consider renting it from someone that does have it. Otherwise, you may be able to find someone that is selling some used bracing at a discount. You can make your own bracing, but I'd probably suggest against it. 
I did and it wasn't adequate to keep my walls totally straight. I have some pretty wavy walls, but it's my house, I can live with it. So if you are gonna build your own ICF bracing, I would suggest doing it in a strong back fashion. So that would be taking a block like this, putting it against your ICF wall, and then having another block that goes 90 degrees to it. So it creates a very, very strong joint. If you are using ICF rated bracing, remember that whatever hardware you use to attach it to that wall, make sure you don't over tighten it. You wanna leave it just a little bit loose. Those blocks compress just a little bit once you put concrete inside of them. If you have your hardware too tight, the blocks that are attached to your ICF bracing won't compress, but everything else will. So the tops of your walls are gonna end up kind of being wavy. If you are making your own ICF bracing out of wood, I suggest cutting slots in that wood so that your hardware has a place to move. Whenever you fill those blocks and those blocks compress, they can still compress. Number 10, have extra help whenever it is a concrete pour day. It's one of the most stressful days at the job site, so have at least one person running the hose, at least two people vibrating the concrete, at least another two people adjusting your bracing as the concrete is being put into those walls, and have at least one or two floaters just in case something happens. If you have a blowout, or if you have minor leaks, or if you need extra bracing in some place, make sure you have all the help that you can get on those days. Number 11, after you've poured all of your concrete within your walls and it has cured, concrete actually shrinks just a little bit. So around your window bucks as well as your door bucks, it's gonna create just a little gap in between them. No matter how tight you affixed those to the concrete, it's gonna have a little bit of a gap to it. So you're gonna to want to spray foam around the inside and the outside using some sort of a professional spray gun like this. I would not recommend the cans as the straws get clogged up way too easily. The professional gun is definitely the way to go. Number 12, use a draft stop of some sort between the top plate of your house and the top of the ICF before you ever put your roof on. It's an area where significant thermal losses can be had. I forgot to do it in my own house and whenever I was working in those areas near that top plate, I could actually feel the air from the inside coming out. Number 13, you're gonna wanna brush off or scrape off the sun damaged areas of your ICF blocks before you put any sort of waterproofing or flashing tape in place. My block manufacturer recommended this Tamco water-based primer prior to doing any of that waterproofing or the tape. After you brush off your ICF, you just roll this stuff on and then apply your self-stick waterproofing membrane or your flashing tape. Number 14, make sure you apply the waterproofing system that your block manufacturer recommends. Most of them are gonna require some sort of a self-sealing membrane. In my case, I used HydroGuard 3000. I got it at Menards and it wasn't too terribly expensive. After you've installed the membrane, you're gonna to wanna to put a platen material over it. Now this stuff has a dimple on one side and then it's flat on the other side. This dimple goes against the membrane side and it's designed to have an airspace on the back side of it. So if any water does get behind this material, it can dry. All of this waterproofing just directs all the water that collects around your foundation down to the very bottom where you should have some sort of a perimeter drain. Now most people are gonna use some sort of corrugated pipe that has a sock on it and then fill it with uh, gravel. I chose to use a product called Formadrain. Now it actually acts as the form for my footing that goes all the way around the house and therefore it is just perfectly level and then it is connected to a pipe that then goes into my sump pumps. I like this product, I thought it was a great idea. When most people install the corrugated pipe that is generally used on homes, 
they don't get it perfectly level. A lot of times it'll have hills and valleys as it goes, and in those valleys it will collect sediment and then it will eventually clog up and it won't work anymore. Since the former drain is dead level, it just doesn't suffer from those problems. Regardless of which perimeter drain you use, make sure that you put plenty of half inch to three quarter inch gravel all over the pipe and all around it. For those of you that have stuck around for this whole video, thank you. And I wanna give you one more piece of advice. ICF homes are extremely heavy and therefore you're gonna need a footing that can actually carry it. So the footing that I used based on our clay soils was two feet wide and about 16 inches deep with four number five bars placed towards the bottom third of the footing. Now your footing design is gonna be dependent upon your soil conditions. So I would suggest having your soils tested first to see what you have and then designing it around that. With that said, you're always gonna wanna put it on a nice big bed of crushed like buttons. Remember, my house is only gonna stay standing if you guys hit that like button. Thank you all so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more great content like this. I'll see you next time.